it up for my little brother over there, Caleb Thompson. What do you see when you look at me? <laughs> what do you see when you look at me? Ni hao, what do you mean to Jiao Jia Le? What she found Liang Chu, Dao Gong, she found Biao Yang. What I just said was, hello, my name is Caleb Thompson. I like basketball, but I'm more of a performer. I'm sure someone who looks like me in a hoodie with a basketball in their hand is the last person you'd expect to speak Chinese. Normally people see me in almost six foot black male in a hoodie and think I play basketball. Yes, I like to play basketball, but I'm a performer at heart. How many of you have heard of the show Ni Hao Kai Lan? That, that was my show. Yes. It was a show that taught kids how to speak Chinese and I watched it a lot. My mom can vouch. <laughs> and I basically taught myself Chinese at a young age and went to a Chinese speaking school in Westfield, New Jersey from pre-K to first grade, all because of that show. And when I was seven, I moved here to Memphis, Tennessee, and ooh, little did I know that that move would open up many opportunities for me. One of my biggest, being performing in China for three months in the international tour of Kinky Boots. Now, if you haven't seen or heard of the play, the main character is a drag queen, and I played the younger version of that character. That entire theme of that show is called Be Who You Are. So in my time to shine, I had to wear these bright red heels and act like these shoes were my life. And I loved performing in heels. I still don't know how women walk in heels because I was literally flopping all over the place, but I enjoyed every second of it. I didn't care when anybody else thought about it. I was having the time of my life. Now, being someone who enjoys performing, I knew I had to be a triple threat. Someone who could sing, dance, and act. I could sing pretty well, acting was always with me, but dance was a growing point for me. The only dance training I've had besides some tap dancing were the countless hours of Just Dance I used to play. There were too many Just Dance hours to count. So, when I moved here, I also enrolled in Collage Dance Collective. Collage Dance Collective is the largest black-owned ballet company in the Southeast, and it is owned by two black men. And I love ballet. And what I love about Collage itself is that they have such a diverse community there. Their professional company has people from all over the world, and even the kids that go there are all unique in their own way. Now. How many of you have heard of the completely untrue, not very right stereotype that ballet is for girls? Now, I really hope you don't hear this now, but how many of you used to believe that that was true? Yeah, that's pretty ironic. I really hate myself for believing that that stereotype was true because I've now learned about so many professional male dancers who have perfected their craft and made such an impact on the dance community. Whenever I would tell kids, well, well, I would tell people, mainly kids my age, that, oh, I love ballet, and oh, I'm really good at singing, and Broadway is my dream, people would give me looks, call me a girl, and call me weak, although ballet takes the strength of like 10,000 men. So it really, really hurt me. And it's gotten so bad that I've once had someone tell me that the white kids at my school, who are professional basketball players, not professional, but really good, they have more black in them than I do. Mind you, the girl who made that comment was black herself. How are you going to say that a white person is more black than a black person just because of what they love to do? <laughs> this happens at school, but even at collage, People question me, saying things like, oh, they don't know what I am, and oh, are you gay, and oh, you're not straight, right? What even are you? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being gay and accepting yourself. I am all for it. 
but it gets really annoying when you have to defend yourself over and over countless times, especially from the people who share the same love for dance as you. One spring, I went to a dance retreat in Chattanooga that was provided by Collage. It was one of my first times traveling without parents, so I felt, I felt pretty grown up and responsible, if I do say so myself. We stayed in nice cabins and we ate good food, we had lots of fun, we danced, and took dance classes from people that I knew and others I did not. One day during lunch, I was sitting with some of the older kids and a former member of Collage, he graduated two years ago, was telling us something that happened like 15 or so minutes before lunch. A lady walked up to him and said, do you do ballet? I mean, not do you ballet. I mean, do you guys, why are there so many kids here? He goes, well, we're on a dance retreat, ma'am. She goes, so do you dance? He goes, yes, yes I do. She goes, oh, so you do hip hop, right? The entire table scoffed in disgust. And there is nothing wrong with hip hop. I love hip hop. But the stereotype is, is that black people that dance only do hip hop. You know, today's society is based off templates that one must live by. If you, if you sing, I mean, if you're a black, you're tall and you're athletic, you're going to want to be in the NFL or the NBA. If you're a dancer, you're either feminine, gay, or weak. If you're a black dancer, you can only excel in topics such as breakdancing, joking, and hip hop. If you even dare to alter these templates the slightest, you're seen as an outcast, a defect, someone who doesn't matter. The ones who have such an amazing dream inside of them and are working to get that dream a reality are constantly being ridiculed by the ones who believe these stereotypes are the way to live. Then that dream is dying slowly by and slowly because they're afraid of getting ridiculed over and over. One time, my favorite artist, John Baptiste, released his new album, World Music Radio. If you, have if you have not listened to that album, after this, you are going to, no exceptions, I really do not care, I'm joking, but you really should listen to it. And one of his songs is called Be Who You Are. And some of the lyrics are, lonely one, out there on an eagle's wing, you're bringing something they can't bring and singing something they can't sing. And those words really stuck with me because they told me that there will only be one me. There's only going to be one Caleb Alexander Thompson who's traveled all over the world, spoke Chinese at a young age, and met such amazing people. Another thing I enrolled in when I moved here was Stax Music Academy. <laughs> and, oh, thank the Lord for that blessing. I love that place, the people, the singing, the, the spirit, the history. It's never ending at that place. And at the beginning of the year, you get to choose which ensembles you want to be in. They had things such as jazz and gospel and bands that travel to perform. In my first year, I chose the opera ensemble. Yeah, <laughs> and at this time, Opera Memphis happened to be collaborating with Stax to teach kids that wanted to opera. I took the class along with three other girls, including these two, and I loved every second of it. Miss Bethania was my teacher, and she was helpful, funny, and the reason behind one of my biggest feats yet. I was an understudy at the Metropolitan Opera House in the historical first black opera at the Met. Fire shut up in my bones. You know, okay, thank you. But, see, this is how life works when you follow your heart. If I didn't do opera and follow my own path, I wouldn't have been associated with the biggest opera house in the world. If I didn't go to the Met, I wouldn't have met people, <laughs> met people like Terrence Blanchard and Spike Lee. If, if I didn't do ballet and did what I wanted, I wouldn't have that one aspect that is crucial in the performance industry. I spoke Chinese at a young age and happened to be performing in China and guiding my family throughout the city with my knowledge because I know how to speak Chinese. <laughs> and there are three really good things that'll help you along your journey. One, believe that you will succeed. 
If you don't believe that you will succeed, it's over, the dream's done, and there's nothing you can do. Number two, you need to find your people. Find the ones that love you, support you, and will do anything to make you the best version of yourself. And number three, most importantly, do what you love for yourself. People are gonna hate you, make petty comments, try to bring you down, break your spirit, but are you doing what you love for them? The ones who are literally preying on your downfall? The ones who want to see you broken, crying in your room? No, you're doing what you love for yourself. Once you do that, then you can share it to the people that want to see you thrive. So never give up. I don't care if stereotypes tell you you're supposed to be this and not that. I don't care if people tell you things that really hurt you. I don't care if you may not think you're good enough and no one cares that you do what you do. You need to keep going. You're only creating an impact that the world needs. And that impact starts with you. Thank you.